This video is for anyone who wants to learn SketchUp. SketchUp's free, just go to app.sketchup.com and click Start Modeling. So this is the workspace inside SketchUp. Don't be intimidated by this. It looks like a lot going on as far as all these tools and settings over here, but it's actually really easy. We're gonna hide these by clicking these arrows. If we ever wanna bring that back, we'll just click that right there. So this is your toolbar right here. We've got other tools down at the bottom. There's three dots. If you click on that, you can find some tools that aren't shown in the toolbar. The first one that's selected by default is the select tool. Every tool has a shortcut. The shortcut for the select tool is spacebar. I'm gonna display the shortcut and the name of the tool just like this in this little box for every single tool. That way you learn the names and the shortcut. So the select tool allows us to select things, obviously. If we drag from right to left with it, it will select anything that touches the box. If we drag from left to right, it will select only things that are fully in the box. So if I do that, it doesn't select the guy, but if I put him fully in the box, it does. I'm gonna click on him and I'm gonna just hit backspace or delete on my keyboard, and that's gonna get rid of him. If you ever want to undo something in SketchUp, you can just hit Command Z, that's on a Mac. If you're on Windows, it's Control Z, and that will undo any step you just did. So I'll click on him again, hit delete, and the next tool we're gonna use is the rectangle tool. We can find it right here, and the shortcut for it is R on your keyboard. So with the rectangle tool, I'm just gonna click right here where the red, green, and blue axis meet. Once I click there, I can just move this out and it will start to make a square or rectangle. If I hit the left arrow key on my keyboard, it will lock it on the green axis. The right arrow key will lock it on the red axis and the up arrow key will lock in on the blue axis. This is true for the line tool and many other tools. But for now, we're gonna type in 20 comma 20 and that's gonna give us a square that's 20 inches by 20 inches. If we type in 20 apostrophe, that's gonna abbreviate foot, comma, 20 apostrophe. It's gonna give us a square that's 20 by 20 feet. Let's talk about moving around. So I'm on a laptop, I have a trackpad. If I put two fingers on my trackpad and move down, it scrolls in. If I move them up, it scrolls out. If you're on a mouse, you're just gonna scroll your wheel. You can click right here to change the settings. I'm on a laptop, but I'm using the mouse settings. That's how I like it. Play around with the settings and see what you like. The other way to move around is hit this tool right here. It's the orbit tool. The shortcut to it is O on your keyboard and you can just click and move left or right, up and down, just like that. So between zooming in and out with your mouse or trackpad and uh, moving around like this with the orbit tool, you can navigate your project. So the next tool we're gonna talk about is the push-pull tool. It's right here on the toolbar, or the shortcut is P on your keyboard. So I'm gonna click on this face and just lift it up. This allows us to push and pull objects to make them three-dimensional. So as I push it up, I can just let go and actually type in the distance I want. So if I type in nine apostrophe, enter, that gives us a nine foot wall there, or a nine foot box. And then the next thing I'm gonna do is show you the line tool. Now the line tool's pretty straightforward. It makes lines, so I'm gonna hit L. That gives me the line tool. And the line tool works by clicking and then you just move around and click the next endpoint and click the next endpoint. And when you connect them, it makes another face. So with the line tool, I'm gonna hover over this line here. And when I find the middle of a line, it will show me with this little light blue dot. Now with the line tool, when you click, if you hit the right arrow key, it's gonna lock you in the red axis. If you hit the left arrow key, it's gonna lock you in the green axis and up arrow key for the blue axis. So I'm gonna hit the left arrow key and on the green axis, I'm just gonna to connect to the midpoint over here. Once I have that line, we're gonna use the move tool. It's M on your keyboard. And I'm just gonna make sure this line is what I'm moving, not this face. Notice the difference there. With the uh, line selected, I'm gonna move this up and I'm on the blue axis. If I were to get off, I could always hit the up arrow key. And I'm gonna type in eight apostrophe. I could have typed in 96, which is 96 inches, same as eight feet. And so now we've got the shape of a house. And the next thing we're going to do is add some materials to this. So if I hit B, that's going to give me the paint tool. Think of B for paint brush. And with this little search icon, we can find all sorts of materials that look like construction materials or just things you'll find in whatever it is you're designing. So right under this drop down, I'm gonna choose this siding right here and I'm gonna hit O and that's gonna orbit around and then I'll hit B again and it's gonna give me the last one I used, which is this one. So I can very quickly move around the project like that. 
I'm going to close that and go down here to roofing and select the roofing just like that. And again, I'm hitting O for the orbit tool, B for the paint tool. And I'm going to paint that on there. So the next tool we're going to talk about, I'll close these out to get this out of the way is the tape tool. So it's basically a tape measure. You can find it right here. If you click on a line and then move perpendicular to that line, it will bring a guideline. So if I take that and I type in four apostrophe, so that's four feet, and I do the same thing here, four apostrophe, I've got two guidelines. I'm gonna click here and bring one up, type in eight apostrophe. So if I hit L for the line tool again, I can trace this out by just clicking on the intersections. And what I'm gonna do is cut out a garage door here. So I'll hit E for the eraser tool. I'm just gonna go over these guidelines here. So now they're gone. And what you can always do is click on a face. You can hit delete and it will remove that face. So basically we've cut a hole out there. But what I'm gonna do is go back one step, Command Z, Control Z if you're on Windows. And I'm gonna show you the offset tool. Now you won't see it on the toolbar yet in this little box here, but all we have to do is hit F on our keyboard. To bring it up and this basically makes a shape inside the shape that you're on so i'm on this rectangle and it's going to make a rectangle that is just a scaled down version if i hit four and hit enter it's going to give me four inches around the perimeter and what i want to do is hit l for the line tool just make a line here and here and now when i cut this out actually e for the eraser tool erase that line now when i cut this out i have some trim around here and let's paint that trim white so again b for the brush tool we can go to colors right here find white it's all the way down at the bottom and just paint right there and so that is how we add some trim to it so as you can see in just a few minutes we have built a little barn structure and there's more we could do to this but there's a few other things I want to show you in here one is that we can change this background we can give it a green grass blue sky sort of look and the way that you do that is you go to styles right here so go to the little search icon on the right and then go to default styles and select this one here now there's all sorts of styles in here and um, I'm just gonna go with this one for now you can get around and play in there and another thing you can do is add shadows by clicking right here if I just turn this button on it's gonna give me shadows and looking at the model if I change the time of day it would change where the Sun would be and we can change the time of year because the Sun is higher in the summertime lower in the winter time so the next thing I'll talk about is scaling things now, if you were building a house to exact dimensions, you probably wouldn't do this with a house, but sometimes you want to scale things. So remember when I said, if I drag a box from right to left with the select tool, everything inside that box gets selected. The way that you scale something is you hit S and that's going to give you the scale tool. And all you have to do is move that tool to scale things. So you can change the scale of anything like that. I'm gonna set this back to how it was. So I'll show you a cool trick that most people don't know here. We can change the color of these materials. If we bring up the materials tab and we go to this home icon, it's gonna show us the materials we have in the model. Now we actually don't have all of these colors. Those were the colors that made up the little guy that was in the model when we first started. But if I click right here on the red roof and go to this edit icon, I can go down here to color texture. And it's gonna start me off with black, but if I move closer to the color here we'll change that and then I can change the color with this little dial right here so that is the basics of using some of the tools in SketchUp thanks for watching this video I'll see you in the next one